Hello and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping in and trying to figure out where do we get the H events from? So we're here on the ground in Ottawa with the CJ4, which has lots of those. And it's unencrypted. So this is going to let us show you how to do it in two ways. So jumping inside the plane, we know that there are a ton of events in this plane. Most of them from the DCPs. So there's the upper and the lower DCPs and the FMCs, which don't show up as standard events. Sure, some of the electrical items will show up as standard events, which is great because as we already learned in SPAD next with the event monitor. So when we head over to event monitor and we click start, you'll see a ton of items spill in. So we hit stop and we come and we say, well, I don't need to use this, this, this exit out or this or see this or the gyro set during this session. I don't need those things that are constantly running. So right now, not much data is happening. Of course, if we switch back into the plane and we were to take our battery and turn it to the off position, turn it back on, we would of course seen that it was toggling the, the master battery with a parameter of one. So it was easy to find those kinds of events because the event monitor can track those. However, if we were to use the PFD menu and bring up the PFD menu and we want to map those buttons to some buttons, of course here, in the data monitor or the event monitor we're not going to see any of those because they were the h events or the html events of the new avionics systems that microsoft flight sim brought along so using both the data monitor and the event monitor these are kind of the elements that we can't just monitor uh, they aren't broadcast in the same way uh, so spad has no way to see them and then provide them to us so instead, there's two approaches. One, like with the CJ4, since it is a unencrypted plane, we could head to our packages, so app data local packages, or wherever you may have had them put your official community. So the CJ4 is in the official. So we go into official, one store, and now one could search so you could use the search and just type in cj4 uh, but i know that it's aircraft asobo aircraft whatever cj4 so i'm just going to scroll down and eventually i'm going to find cj4 cap cap cj4 so we're going to go into the cj4 we're going to go to sim objects airplanes cj4 and we're going to go to the model now there's two types of files well, one type of file, it's an XML. Sometimes it's named cockpit, sometimes it's named interior, uh, sometimes it's just named like model. So you're looking for the interior XML, not the exterior XML. So here's the cockpit that says exterior to me. I'm gonna open it using VS code, uh, which is my default, but that's just because it breaks it up into multiple colors for us. So now you have the entire file of how the interior works. So real easy, we can search for menu. And what we're gonna find is this is inside of the glass cockpit component. And as we come down, we find the upper panel, which is a component. And then inside of that, we can see that it is using the key prefix of generic upper one and then menu, push, pilot, DCP, PFD, menu. So that's an easy way for us to find the H event that it's going to send into the plane. What we can do inside of SPAD next, and now that we're done with this, we'll just go ahead and hit stop. But we're gonna head over to our panels. We're gonna go to our stream deck, and we're gonna head into our PFD section. So here on our PFD menu, what's going to happen is we would have assigned, so add action, send simulation event.
And under the Microsoft 2020 events, you're going to find custom events. And what's nice is they've been categorized for us. So under the PFD 1, because 1 is left side, 2 is the right side, there all of those buttons are available to us. And as you can see, it was called an HTML event, so an H event. So there's our PFD menu, and it's number one, so it's going to be sent to the left screen. So we go ahead, click OK. That's now been assigned. When we go back to the plane, now when we press that button, we can see that we found that HTML event. However, we do run into the problem that when it is a locked plane, so it's encrypted files, like the longitude or the 787 we don't have these opportunities we're going to hit the uh, escape key we're going to go to general options we're going to go to developers and we're going to enable developer mode save it head on back and resume so then we come up here to tools we head into behaviors and now we're going to see all of the elements now one thing I've seen sometimes when you come in, it's not going to have template parameters. They're, they're missing. Uh, it could be blank. If that happens, just hit the quick reload button because what's going to happen is it's going to do this. It's going to reload the plane. And now when you switch back, uh, you should get the template parameters. So sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. So here we are with the CJ4 template XML, and this is the exterior element or the gears, the handling, the engine. What we want is what we saw before is to look for the cockpit or interior XML files. Now this is great because it brings us in and now it's broken down into the sections. So even if I was looking for some controls like the electrical, I could come in here and select, for example, the battery. I can open up the template parameters and now you can start looking into the subsections and you can see the IDs as well as the nodes, the animation and all of the events that it triggers or, or uh, sends off. So here it's using the cockpit electrical battery one. So it's the, the battery switch. Um, so you look at electrical battery and it's effectively setting the state of the battery and you can see that it is setting the electrical battery through a K event. How do we find those H events? So in the XML, we're going to look for something that applies. Now you may need to poke around. I know that it's glass cockpit because looking through this list, it's the only thing that makes sense for anything to do with the glass cockpit. So we're going to click on that and you can see there is a ton of objects. But what's great is it lets us start narrowing them down. So we know we want to go to those DCP, those detached control panels, um, especially the one that's over top of the PFD. So we're going to click on that. And right away, the upper unit is available to us. So we're going to click on that and then inside of it, each one of those subcomponents, one of those buttons, has the ability to click on it. So this has now narrowed it down and found it for us. So here, as we come down to the PFD menu, you can see all of the things that are part of the base template. So what you're going to see is that the base template for it has the HTML event of generic upper one push PFD menu. So right there you can find your HTML events and you can even see that the button push is one of these BVARs which unfortunately we don't have access to currently but maybe in the future. Right there you can find the HTML event and if you don't already have these HTML events, say it's a brand new plane with its own avionics and these client events have not been created, you can make your own. And to do that, you're going to use the link posted now. So that's going to take you to the video that explains how you can put your own custom events into Spadnex while waiting for Spadnex to have those assimilated and updated.
it is a manual process so it requires people in the community to aggregate them and then they get published and then they show up like they do now where you have those lists and those sections let's do one more plane uh, real quick because there's a couple of neat things um, that this helps us break down so another thing that's cool about dev mode is you can always go to tools go to aircraft selector and so since we're going to use the longitude let's go ahead grab it and it's going to load in for us okay so now that it's loaded in let's use the landing lights as a great example what we're going to do is we're going to head to the event monitor we're going to go ahead and clear it hit start so now if we come into the plane and we turn these things on and off you're going to see that nothing has shown up inside of the event monitor for those. We do have a problem here where here's an example where even a standard event's not showing up because it's using a B event and then they're changing some data under the hood, not sending events. Now data changes, we could go to the data monitor, find those datas and look at them, uh, but using events, so let's figure out what they're doing. So if we come back, we want to jump to the longitude cockpit XML. Great. This information has shown up. Now, we could change to the lighting. And there is a search component. So what is kind of neat is you can type in landing. And now we've got seven results. So landing light switch one. Let's go ahead jump to it and let's look at the lighting template and so here we can see that it's adjusting landing light with the index of one so this one's real easy to figure out because anything that does use an index the toggles still work you just have to pass a parameter along with them so here the parameter is one so it's k2 landing light set so it's using the dual parameters uh, and again there's that B event that's taking place, hence why we don't see anything. So no problem. What we're going to do is we're going to deal with the SIM bars that are being used. And since we know uh, that we have to pass a 1, so this is inserting the toggle event the way we normally would, which is not to pass a value. If you put the value of 0, uh, SPAD just gets rid of it. 0 is the default. That is what it's sending. So if we press that, you'll see that we've got the left, the right, and hiding just behind it, we have the pulse going off. So those three items are all being triggered when you send it without an index or without a parameter passed through. Now, if we turn them off, if we go back to SPAD next, you'll see that for the left, I added a parameter of 1 to the toggle value because I saw that parameter here inside of the information because of the index. So because of that SIMVAR index of a 1, I added the parameter. And now when I press just the left, I get just the left. And when I press the right, I get just the right. And then we figured out since pulse light came on, we can use uh, index three or parameter three to toggle the pulse light on and off. That's another example where when the event monitor doesn't work for you, you can drill down inside and find this information. These GTCs, they have knobs and buttons and how do we find the H events for those because in this case there's even four of them well same type of process because we know those are H events and they don't show up and anything to do with avionics these are HTML it's all HTML code uh, they're going to be the H events so AS5000 that's a Sobo 5000, even though Working Title did it. 3000 and G5000, so 5000 it is.
Now same thing, you have the different elements and places. So the DCPs in this case, because the longitude has these extra panels, those are the DCPs. However, we're talking about the GTCs. So let's go ahead and drill down in those. So same thing, we're getting into the GTCs. We're then going to go down a little bit further. So there's the screens themselves and their values, but we can get down to the knobs. And you're going to see that there's knobs one, two, three, and four, because there are four of these left, left, right, middle, etc., all the way across. So let's go ahead and look at the ones furthest on the left here, which would be the pilot side. So now we can go further down, and again, we now have all of the knobs. There is a knob zero, 01, there is a zero, 01 small, a zero, 03, a zero, 02, and then the joystick pan. Let's look at joystick one. The templates is sourcing the AS3000 TSC vertical one. So that's kind of the event ID node. And then when we come down to the knobs, the knobs themselves, you've got big turn, so the big, so the outer, the inner, uh, so it's got those animation names and it breaks it all down as well. So when we come down further, we're going to find here is the information of the exact H event that's being sent. So this is very helpful for you to structure it, like we said before, if you need to use the client events. But there you can find that the AS3000 TSC Vertical 1 right knob large, so the larger knob, incrementing and decrementing are the events for it. You've got that information, you can break it all the way down. Uh, if you were looking further, you could go to the small knob. So it brings us to the right, uh, to the small knob. And so again, you can look up the small knob and you can come down to its information, go into its base, and again, you can come in and find the bindings, and then you will be able to find the H events as well. And the B events are great because they're named the same. So if you find the B events, uh, you're pretty much going to find a similar for the H event. You just have to know where to look. So the easiest place is tools, behaviors, and then come on in and break it down and search through and just narrow down the list and poke and prod and you're gonna get there. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. It's been a while since I've been in the longitude. Hey, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Come along next time. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.